Staten Island. This is the only time the race touches Staten Island. The start looking, I would say, more orderly than it has in some years past. Tremendously well organized when you figure there are more than 25,000 potential finishers out there. The founder is out there also. That would be Fred Lebo. And there he is, a remarkable man who came here in the 1950s from his native Transylvania in Romania. He was perfectly anonymous, a small, slight guy, as you see, working in the garment district, but then he started the New York City Marathon. About a year and a half ago, he was diagnosed with brain cancer. They gave him three to six months to live, but they also gave him chemotherapy, radiation, and his tremendous will to live and to run brought him here today. And there they go. The New York City Marathon of 1991 is underway, Marty. Well, they had a problem keeping them back today. It was like a champagne bottle, and the cork was tough to keep on. The runners in the back were pushing up to the runners in the front, and I think they had to let them go. So they actually started a few seconds earlier. They'll go up the grade of the Veritano Narrows Bridge now, the second longest suspension bridge in the world. The tower's there, and on one of those towers, we have a camera. They're as high as a 60-story building. This is the beginning of the course, and it leads all the way, as we said, through the five boroughs. Let's have a look at it, Marty. There's the red line. It's actually a blue line that goes through the city, painted on the street. To Queens, to Manhattan, to the Bronx, and then back to Manhattan, into Central Park, and to the finish line. There's Fred Lebo leading the way, and if we always have somebody we don't know to start out in the lead. 11.26. Let's check him out. Number 11.26. He won't last very long. If he does, it's the upset of the century. But he has his moment literally in the sun, leading the New York City Marathon as they head up the Verrazano Narrow Bridge. It's named after the man who discovered New York Bay, New York Harbor. surprise in the women's race. This is Lisa Undiecki of Australia, and already she is setting a fast pace. Liz McColgan behind her has let her go, and Joan Benoit Samuelson is behind her somewhere. This is a big psychological uh, bombshell that she has dropped in the first seconds of the race. We expected Joan Samuelson per to perhaps do this and try and inject a psychological edge into the race, but it's been Lisa Andiecki. There are the women's marathon best, the wor world best. They don't keep an actual world record because the courses vary so much. Ingrid Christensen of Norway, you see, 221.06 in 1985. American record, Joan Benoit Samuelson in the race today. The course record, Alison Rowe of New Zealand. That leader we saw is Ahmed al a 26-year-old from Germany. There's number one, Juma Ikanga, former winner of the race, one of the two favorites today. Right now, that bridge is rolling and rocking. Ikanga, number one, won here in 1989 and has run more fast marathons than anyone in the world. And you see some of the other runners looking around trying to figure out where the favorites are at this point. The men's race, much different than the women's race at this point. And they are all seemingly looking to Ikaga to lead this pack. Yeah, the men's marathon best times in the Simo of Ethiopia still holds the world's best. That gives you some idea of the size of the field, not the complete idea. 25,000 will take a long time to go over that bridge. 46 degrees, that is just about perfect, wouldn't you oh, say? Oh, it's terrific. It's similar to 89.